we present optimal sensor position for a computer mouse. I'm Son Jung Kim, and this is a collaborative work with Byung Jul Lee, Thomas van Germert, and Antti Ulla In 1968, Douglas Engelbert invented the first computer mouse, and it has dominated as a major pointing device. Even though there were lots of improvements in terms of technology, the key role of a computer mouse is always controlling a cursor, which is basically a point. Physically, a computer mouse is a volumetric object having certain size, which should be abstracted into a point. We already know various physical factors affecting pointing performance. However, one key factor has not been properly studied for a decade. Where should we place the sensor? Should it be under the fingertip? Or should it be under the palm? Apparently, there's no common consensus between mouse manufacturers. So, in this paper, we are tackling this problem. Long story short, does a sensor position really matter? Yes, it does, and its effect is up to 14%. Next question. Then, where should we place the sensor? Where is the optimal sensor position? Our study shows that the center is good in general. However, each one may have their personal optimal sensor position. Then, how can I find my best sensor position? Our variable sensor position mice can help you. We propose some optimization techniques with it. Before we getting into the main story, I'd like to introduce us some background why a sensor position changes pointing performance. First of all, the hand rotates while using a mouse. You can check this rotation in the movie, even though a user is trying to draw a straight line. The sensor on the mouse only captures the translational movement and ignores all the rotations. Because of this property, the drawn line on the right upper is straight even though the mouse is rotating. Also, the sensor at different positions changes the cursor's trajectories. All the lines there are drawn from the same motion but with different sensor positions. The blue line is drawn from the front sensor and the red line is drawn from the rear sensor. A same motion may result in different cursor movement so it may introduce a difficulty in pointing. Regarding this problem, the latest academic paper we could find is from 1989, which concluded the ball at the front is the best. After this research, Microsoft started to produce a mouse with a ball at the front. Beside that research from 1980s, technologies have been changed a lot, so we decided to tackle this problem again. So there is debate between gamers which having two different abstraction models. The difference is where to abstract the whole mouse into a point. The first model claims is the fingertip and the second claims is the centroid of the mouse. To test the different sensor positions as wide as possible, we fabricated two different variable sensor position mice. The first one mounted a sensor on a moving rail and there were seven possible mounting positions. The second one equips two sensors and it synthesizes a virtual sensor between them. To synthesize a virtual sensor, we established a mathematical model. First, we set the front sensor position to be the P0 or 0% and the rear sensor position to P1.0 or 100% and the virtual sensor signal is simply the weighted sum of two. To validate our virtual sensor model, we performed a robot arm experiment. The robot arm moved the physical sensor mouse and the virtual sensor mouse precisely, and we prepared two different motion plans. The first plan moved the mouse without a rotation, and the second one add a rotation on it. Without rotation, the sensor captures the plant movement precisely and all the sensor positions generated the same path. 
We also confirm the virtual sensor we synthesize is generating the same path to the particular sensor. When rotation is added to the movement, we can notice the rotation is distorting the path and the choice of sensor position systematically changes the path. The orange one is drawn from the rear sensor and the blue one is drawn from the front sensor. We can notice the front sensor is drawing the wider path. We confirm the virtual sensor is also drawing the same path and the discrepancy between physical and virtual sensor is less than 1%. With the RoboDAM experiment, we conclude the virtual sensor works just like the physical sensor. So we only use the virtual sensor for the following experiments. So now it's the time to answer the questions we asked before. The first question was, does the sensor position really matter? To answer that question, we conducted a within subject user study with different sensor positions. We collected pointing performance using the standard feature load test with 14 participants. The result is shown in the figure. The result is following the quadratic distribution picked at the center, which means the centered position works best for the participants. The extreme positions, the frontmost and the rearmost, was slower than the center by 10% and 14%. Individual research shows that some users have the best performance at the rear and some users have actually no advantage of changing the sensor position and some perform the best at the slightly forward sensor position. Compared to the exact sensor position, the personal best sensor position performed about 4% better. Because different sensor positions generate different paths, we hypothesize the performance degradation is mainly because of the path deviation. We measure the path error between the idea and the actually performed path. For example, the left and right pictures are the path with the higher deviation, and the center one is the path with low path deviation. We again find the quadratic distribution of the error and the minimum error was found at the center. When we compared the amount of the error and the pointing performance, we could find a strong negative correlation between them. This suggests that low performance may be because of the higher error. The user experiment answers the second question. So where's the optimal sensor positions? In general, that's around the center. However, each individual may have different optimal positions. The final question could be how can I conveniently find where's my best sensor position? We propose two approaches for sensor position optimization. First one is manual calibration. First, set a sensor to one position and measure the performance. Set the sensor position to another and measure again the performance. Set the third sensor position, measure, and so on you can finally find the best sensor position. This method works, but it's tedious. So we propose the second approach, in-task optimization. This method consists of two parts. First, performance inference. Second, Bayesian optimization. First, you set a sensor position, do a normal task, and the performance inference method will measure the performance from the task and Bayesian optimizer will infer the which will be the best sensor position and suggest the next sensor position to be tested. Performance inference utilizes the correlation between the error and the throughput. When performing a normal pointing, it measures the starting point and the clicked point and make an ideal path and compare the performed path to calculate the error between them. After collecting enough clicks, we can perform the Bayesian optimization. The objective function for the optimizer is minimizing the error. After a few iterations, it can find the best sensor position. Please check the paper for the detail. We examined optimization method with one user, and the manual calibration and the Bayesian optimization give the same result. To conclude, 
the old verdict from the 1989 is not true anymore. The center position is generally better, and personalization makes it even better. We aim for open science in this work, so all the 3D models, electronics, source code, and experimental data could be found in this website. Thank you for listening.